There's a special kind of pride That you feel deep down inside A strength that seems to thrive In Lima Island County The American way of life To get in gear and do what's right An unbreakable forthright link Called Real American Strength Lima Island County Real American Strength Keeping you up to date with what's happening in your community. Community Focus on GTV2. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. Put this date on your calendar, February 15th, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's the 4-H Horse Club's Pancake Day. Jody Sutherland is here today to give us the details. Thanks Good for morning. joining us. Hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. What do you have planned this year? Well, 10 years. Can you believe it? It's gone by so fast, but we're really excited. It's our 10th annual All You Can Eat Pancake and Sausage Day, Saturday, February 15th. And yeah, 7 to 2, we find that time works out a lot better with people's schedules. So. The, the best thing about it is obviously it's not only pancakes all you can eat, but it's sausage too. And everybody loves the sausage that we have. Um, and then we've got the drinks, there'll be a bake sale. Silent auction last year was huge. We had so many businesses that donated, so I'm sure that's going to grow a little bit more too. Um, and of course, if you want to get pre sale tickets, you can pick them up out at the fairgrounds or the scout house. They are $7 for adults, um, they're going to be $8 at the door. And then children four to eight are going to be. Four dollars, and then children three and under are free. Okay, what do you do with the money? Well, of course, we want to continue to be able to help the fairgrounds out. They have a little bit of a loan um, on the pavilion. You know, we did get a very large donation, of course, from the Schmidt Horse family, um, but there's a little bit of a loan to pay off, so certainly if anyone wants to donate and take care of that. But then we're also looking at opportunities to be able to improve upon the amazing facility we already have, just kind of looking at landscaping, covered bleachers, you know, we really do need some more bleacher seating, and what can we do not only to make it better for our 4-H members, of course, but then when we're trying to attract these great events to come here, we want to make sure that we have an amazing facility for them to rent out. Well, and really, the pavilion is wonderful, and if you haven't seen it yet, you know, stop by the fairgrounds and check it out. What a beautiful facility you guys built. We really are lucky, too, and we just want to continue to make sure that we take really great care of it and make it great for years to come for the future of the 4-H clubs. Okay, and give us the date, time, and place one more time for the Pancake Day. Saturday, February 15th. It's at the FOP Hall and 7 to 2 o'clock, so make sure you come out. We do have carryout available, too. If you can't stay, just pick your order up to go. Wonderful. We appreciate you coming in today. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Jody Sutherland from the 4-H Horse Association. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. We're not doing well, Allen County. Almost 70% of our adults are overweight. And close to 40% of our children. We eat the wrong foods. We smoke too much. We don't exercise nearly enough. We can do better. We can do better. Activate Allen County is working with schools, churches, businesses, and local government to influence policies that will help us all do better. We can do better for me, for me, for all of us. Join the effort to help Allen County do better by going to activateallencounty.com. Pay for with funding through a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Let's all do our part to keep the Ottawa River clean and healthy. Clean trash and debris from storm drains to keep them from being washed into the river. Your actions matter. Come and discover Art Space Lima right here in downtown Lima. We're a world-class art gallery featuring works by local, regional, and national artists throughout the year. Beautiful works of art of all kinds, traditional and contemporary paintings, photographs, ceramics, and sculpture. Come and shop the beautiful and unique items for sale in the gift shop. We offer workshops taught by award-winning instructors so you and your kids can explore your creative side. Come and see what you've been missing. Discover Art Space Lima today. We're back on Community Focus, and Jed Metzger is in the studio with us today. He is Hi. the director of the Lima Allen County Chamber of Commerce, and this morning you have on your college access hat. I do, at that. Uh, we have a great day coming up. It's on February the 9th. It's from 1 to 4. It's called College Goals Sunday. Our focus is to help parents and students fill out their and complete their FAFSA. We, we can complete everything right there at that site. We have all the different college uh, advisors, or not advisors, 
uh, uh, financial advisors from the different universities in town and colleges in town that will be there as well as several volunteers. I'll work you right through the process so it's not so stressful if you've never uh, filled out a FAFSA form before. It can be mind-boggling. But it can be and uh, they uh, sort of take you through it so you don't make the mistakes. I mean I the first time I went <laughs> through it I went through it with them because you know, there's all these changes every year but it, uh, we usually get about 50 students. It's at Lima Senior uh, High School, and you just go through the main doors, and then we'll direct you from there. But uh, it uh, has made a difference a lot of times, and you know, with parents and, and kids uh, taking that stress level off because we're there to help guide them through that process. So, do they need to bring any financial information or paperwork with them? Well, basically, you should, although you don't have to, but you should have your taxes done by then. Um, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's hard. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you don't, I mean, you can always file those later, the sure. numbers later, but uh, at least that will work you through what else needs to be on that form. And and, uh, and every year you have to do it. If you have a student going to uh, college or, or university, you have to complete the FAFSA form every year. So, um, And they can help you sometimes. Uh, Parents get confused if they've been divorced, how do you do this, or, uh, or if there's something else significant that's happened. So, uh, you know, the, the guys are, and ladies are very nice as far as just make you feel real comfortable. We have the computer set up so you can do it right there on the FASBA website, and, and uh, we can print it out for you too so you can take it with you. That's wonderful. And then they'll help you later. So, in other words, let's say you don't have everything completed. Uh, we have a resource center at the uh, Lima Public Library, and so we can schedule some times in which you can go meet with the financial advisors at, at that point uh, to help you uh, along on the way. So it's a really fantastic The main thing service. is it has to be filed in whatever form that you you have. I mean, if you don't have your taxes done, you still need to file it by. Uh, it's later than February 9th, but uh, not too much later. Okay, so the college goal Sunday is Sunday, February 9th. Correct. At what time? It runs from 1 to 4. Okay, and that's at Lima Senior, Lima and they Senior. just show up? They just show up. Well, they can go on the um, uh, uh, FASBA, fa FASBA.com website and sign up if they want to, mm -hmm. or they can show up and, and uh, we'll work them in. All right, and that's just one of the things going on at the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, You're also welcoming all your members. Yeah, we get ready. Every year we do this Operation Thank You, and, and uh, not every chamber does this, so very few do it, but we get about a hundred and some volunteers together and we go to our members, take them our membership directory and business plan and then some other goodies and we thank them for being members and and, and we do more than that. We ask them, are we doing things right? You know, do, uh, is there a particular need that they have that we uh, want them to, that they want the chamber to work on? And so uh, that stuff comes back to me and, and, and to Cindy, and then we, we work on it. We, we say, okay, can we do this? I mean, a lot of times, that's our connection. I mean, when you have 985 members, that's your connection that you have sometimes during the year. Now we call them throughout the year. I mean, we call at least 75, 80 percent of our membership every single year, but and ask them, uh, you know, how things are. But it, that personal contact, when you come to their business and you say thank you and you give them a little gift uh, to say thank you, they remember you. And I, I think that's why our retainment is so high because we do listen to our members and we try to to help them, uh, you know, uh, be successful. So, what day should we expect the volunteers to come to our business? Oh boy, that's uh, <laughs> next uh, next Friday, I believe. Friday okay. Is next Friday, I think we prepare the packets. Um, oh, gee, I'm gonna have to get. Back. That's okay. That's it's Just, coming up yeah, within the month. <laughs> if somebody from the chamber in shows the, up at your door, welcome. In them. February. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, uh, toward the middle of the month. All right. So we, we're, we're doing that, and then uh, oh, I don't know. The chamber always has different activities and things that's, that's going on, and and one of our big projects last year was developing the we are Lima Allen County dot com site. Right. And, and that was the, the focus of that was to our members, our top investors, which we had about twenty some in the room, said we want you to do something to market the assets of our community uh, and the market to bring businesses here. Uh, a lot of times we market amongst ourselves here, people, you know, uh, they listen to us, but you know, you really need to figure out how you reach out beyond the boundaries and so we're trying to get everybody to go to that site we are Lima Allen County dot com and, and there's a wealth of information there you probably don't even know about our community there's videos uh, that 
people are talking, and there's a, uh, I know in the Convention Visitors Bureau section, there's uh, taking a retail therapy day for the ladies going around doing shopping. So, you know, we, we do have some things, some hidden treasures, as we call it, uh, that uh, people probably don't even know about. So the, the whole goal is to get that website uh, and get people going to that website from outside the community, uh, get the Google ratings up, okay, so that when people type in Lima or Allen County, that comes up as one of the top sites. We're not quite there yet, but we're, we're getting closer. We do the <laughs> Google Analytics. But I think it's really important because so many times, uh, you know, uh, we don't take sometimes a lot of pride in ourselves. When you look at economic development and you look at the resources that we have, the water, uh, the, the rail, the, the roadway systems, uh, the land, the, you know, it's it's incredible. And the advanced manufacturing that we have here, uh, the top uh, companies, you know, corporate headquarters are here. We need to tell that story. We also need to tell the story of why businesses have been successful here, why they chose to come to Lima, why they stay here, why their third and fourth generations still stay here. And then the different opportunities we have just in, in uh, visiting our community. Uh, what, for the trailing spouse especially, what, what type of things that we have here to, to offer. So it's all those things we're, we're trying to get out. All in one spot. All we are LimaAllenCounty.com. Correct. All right. We appreciate you coming in, Jed. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care and stay warm out there. Oh, yes. Jed Metzger <laughs> from the Chamber of Commerce. When we come back, we'll get an update on the Lima Parks right after this on GTV2. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Lima Safety City today. Hello, I'm Chuck Eichelberger from the Lima Noon Optimist Club. Safety City is a very important part of the Lima community. The Optimist Club is renovating Safety City and it needs your help. Donations can be made by going to the website limasafetycity.org. You can also send a donation to Lima Noon Optimist Club, P.O. Box 428, Lima, Ohio 45802. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Safety City today. My joints ached and I was always tired. I was always cold, I couldn't concentrate, and my body hurt all over. My doctor told me I had lupus. Women of childbearing age, and especially African American women, are at higher risk. If you suspect that you have lupus, you should contact your doctor. You're invited to attend the local lupus support group meetings on the second Thursday of each month at 1 o'clock at Lima Towers. For further information, go to ConnectedHands.org. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Allied Waste Services in the City of Lima encourage you to live green by recycling all that you can. Recycling promotes green living by reducing the amount of waste materials buried in landfills. This saves money, natural resources, and energy. Keep our environment healthy and start recycling today. Allied Waste Services is committed to a clean environment. Contact us today for your recycling needs. Visit our website, republicservicesohio.com, to learn more about recycling today. What is your name, please? I am Doug Berenger. I am Doug Berenger. I'm Doug Berenger. Remember to tell the truth. Only one person was truthful about their name. For victims of identity theft, it is not a game. They find their credit and reputations ruined. Never give out your personal information to people or businesses you are not familiar with. By the way, I'm the real Doug Berenger. I'm an attorney and the victim of identity theft. Protect yourself. It can happen to anyone. We're back on Community Focus, and Rick Stolle is here right now. He is Lima's Parks Director, and just because we're in the middle of a deep freeze doesn't mean that you're not busy. We're very busy. It's, it's so many things going on with our recreational programming, first, first of all, I guess, and our, our uh, Boys and Girls Youth Basketball League is continuing. We uh, did have to postpone games last Saturday due to uh, the weather, uh, and uh, we're moving forward. We, um, we've got uh, just, a, just a tremendous amount of, of great talent and great kids and coaches throughout Lyman and Allen County participating in this league. We will wrap up February the 8th with the regular season, and then we will go through uh, a series of tournament games, and you could play up till about the 26th of February. So you, you may have a month left, you may have about four or three, or four more games so you may have like three more weeks left so somewhere in that in that time frame but we're looking forward to you know another great uh, finale to a tremendous program 
And you know, we're not that far away from spring, and that means baseball. <laughs> baseball. Baseball and softball. Are, we'll start our registration here probably in March. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we are scheduled to have our winter meetings with the, the different uh, affiliates in the league here coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we'll uh, bring all those folks together. We call them our winter meetings. And uh, we'll get together and talk about any changes we want to make with the league, get our start times set up, and then everyone will get their registration forms out. And we'll start practices in April. And the first uh, part of May, our games are underway. So, you know, it, it seems like in May you're talking about this is the end of January. So that's a distance away. But it really isn't when you start putting all the things together. And that's kind of what our programming is. We spend, you know, a couple months getting everything ready, getting everyone in tuned, and getting the information out, getting it back, forming the teams, and then, you know, the practices and the game start. So people think, well, why, uh, you know, what's the hurry? Well, we've got a lot to get done, especially when you're talking about 25 teams in one league and 25 teams in another. And then you have, of course, the softball component with the, with the young ladies, and you throw all that together. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, lot of time and, and effort to put into schedules and to get people to understand we need your forms in when we ask for them, not three days after. So we, <laughs> we, we really, you know, because you, you, know, you have to order uniforms, you have to you get the whole shooting match. So there's a lot to do. And why it looks like it's a long way away, it really isn't for us. And besides that, it's going to take three months for the snow to melt so the well, fields yes. are ready. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and how about all those people just clamoring, heading to New York this weekend for a beautiful <laughs> Super Bowl in the sun? Oh, for pizza. That's crazy. You know, there are people in Faroque Park enjoying the snow for the last few weeks. There are. And boy, I'll tell you, there's just been, we actually uh, closed uh, Cole Street uh, be about two weeks ago. It's one of the longest stints we've had it closed and, and remain, have it you know, remaining closed for a, a period of time. Between the cold weather and the snow, it's, it's really hung around. And with the forecast uh, for this week and uh, some more snow coming, it could be uh, through next weekend before we get it back opened up again. But it's a great place to go. You know, one of those we were talking before, it's one of the, the true uh, traditions of winter in Lima. It really is. Getting out to Froton. We have gone through... Uh, bunch of wood burning in the fireplace because it's been cold and and it's, it's been white so people get out they they take full advantage of that opportunity and and uh, we want them to come out and enjoy we just again ask people you know be safe be courteous to those in and around the area and and take care of it because um, it's it, it is a great uh, great outdoor activity for those who want to get out and enjoy some of this cold and snowy weather. <laughs> For those of us who aren't hibernating. Yes, yes, yes. So, so again, you know, get out, enjoy it. Tremendous opportunities to get out and, and just walk in the parks and, and enjoy the, the scenery. And uh, we see people on the river walk and, and uh, in different areas, you know, of our parks, just out enjoying the, uh, the opportunity to get out and do a little walking over the winter months. Do you still rent the cross-country skis like you used to? We do, but our uh, you know, that's, you know, people ask that a lot, especially when it starts to snow, obviously, but our, our um, inventory has somewhat depleted, and they've worn, they kind of worn out a little bit. So there are selected sizes of the ski boots still <laughs> left, plenty of skis and poles, but once in a while people will come and ask, hey, you know, can I do some cross-country skiing? They say, come on down, we'll try to get you fitted up with what we've got left, but I've been with the park system now for seven years, and... Uh, I think it was probably seven or ten years before that that they started doing that program. And so uh, it was a grant, I understand, that was received. And, and uh, we're going to try and get that uh, replenished, that inventory replenished, uh, uh, so we can get people out and enjoy some of that. That would activity. be great. Rick, if people want more information about the Parks District, where do they get it? They can just give us a call at 221-5195, stop in at 900 South Collett, or check us out on our city website and click on recreation and you'll see the different activities that are going on and uh, get out and enjoy the winter weather. Don't let, you know, the winter <laughs> dictate where you, where you habitate <laughs> for, 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 the, uh, for the next couple of months. Get out and enjoy yourselves and um, take full advantage of what the parks have to offer. Good advice. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having us. Lima Parks Director Rick Stolle. When we come back, we'll tell you how your kids can get a free prom dress right after this on GTV2.
Some things just naturally go together. Other things don't mix. Please, don't drink and drive. Do you know what to do when you hear the community warning sirens? The sirens are activated any time the public is in life-threatening danger. When you hear the sirens, go inside and turn on your radio or television for more information. If you're outside and unable to take shelter, get in your car and listen to your radio for more information. Follow the instructions carefully. Remember, the sirens mean to take shelter and listen to your radio or television for more information. Take the necessary steps to keep you and your family safe. I didn't want to be touched. He said it would feel good, but it didn't. So he gave me a new doll and some candy. He told me not to tell anybody and that it's our special secret. <laughs> How do I make him stop? Say no. Run away. Scream. It's okay to tell an adult you trust if someone is hurting you or making you uncomfortable. Feel safe. Feel strong. Feel free. We're not doing well, Allen County. Almost 70% of our adults are overweight. And close to 40% of our children. We eat the wrong foods. We smoke too much. We don't exercise nearly enough. We can do better. We can do better. We can do better. Activate Allen County is working with schools, churches, businesses, and local government to influence policies that will help us all do better. We can do better. For me. For me. For all of us. Join the effort to help Allen County do better by going to activateallencounty.com. Paid for with funding through a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We're back on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. Does your daughter or granddaughter need a prom dress? Well, there's a chance for you to get one for free. Candy Newland is here. She is with the Kiwanis Club, and she is running Cinderella's Closet. Thanks and, for being here. Oh, my pleasure. We're, we're so excited about this event. It is, it is so good not only for us to see these girls come in and get these beautiful dresses, but it's also a great money saver for, um, for families. Mm, certainly. So how does it work? Well, on February the 8th, between 9 and 1, girls should come to First Federal Bank on Allentown Road, go downstairs, check in with our upstairs Kiwanians, who are all men. They will not be downstairs. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes. And um, come down and go through all of our dresses. We have literally hundreds of dresses. And uh, find the one that you like, and uh, we have places to try them on. We have dressing rooms, and we have mirrors. And when you find the one you like, you just take it home with you. Oh, that's wonderful. I is there any organization, or do they just all show up at the same time in mass? Um, well, Early Bird gets the most beautiful dress. Okay, so at 9 o'clock, there could be a crowd at the yes, door. Yes, yes, and there usually is. Um, but we have plenty of space. We are so fortunate to be partnering with the First Federal Bank and Duffy's Cleaners. And that's another issue. If you have uh, dresses similar to this in your closet that you probably will never wear again, but is just lovely. Take it to Duffy's Cleaners. They're cleaning everything, and then um, they become part of the collection. So you want to show us what you brought? Well, yes, this this lovely dress. Of course, is not very appropriate for today. <laughs> no, but hopefully by the time prom gets here, yes, it will be up warm up. This is just a, one an example of one of the lovely dresses that um, you can get for free. As far as um, accessories. Maybe a bracelet is all you would need to go with this. It is, it is just gorgeous, and we have literally, as I said, hundreds of dresses just as beautiful as this there. All styles, colors, sizes? Yes, si uh, yes. We especially would like sizes 14 to 18. So if you have any of those in your closet, we could really use those. Those seem to go the fastest, and um, as we all know, some of these gowns are sized very small. At least yeah, that's what I I'm telling myself. I'd need a shoehorn to get into something uh, like yes, that. Yes, yes. But um, they are so beautiful and such a great opportunity for not only the girls to get a dress, um, and, and it's not even necessarily that they can't afford one, but it, it is a, it's a great environmental thing to do. It recycles dresses that were ordinary just hanging in the closet. I know I had prom dresses that hung in the closet, and now they're all yellowed and... Well, not to mention outdated. Right, exactly, exactly. And so they just get thrown away. So this takes a beautiful dress, somebody probably paid a lot of money for originally and um, allows it to be worn again and enjoyed and appreciated. So this is for any girl, any income, any school. Yes. Just come and get a dress. Right. And don't forget, not only do you have prom, but you have homecoming. And anymore, the girls are wearing gorgeous gowns for homecoming. 
So come and get one for prom, get one for homecoming. They can take two? Oh, certainly. What a good deal. Certainly. Now, if you are coming to get a dress or you came and got one last year, bring it back next year. That's right. Really. Exactly, exactly. And, the dr and we've received new dresses, so just if you got one last year, doesn't mean you're going to see the same dresses this year. So this is a project of Kiwanis, correct? It is. Why it do is. you do it? Uh, simply because we just think it's a great thing to do. Um, there aren't a lot of services for girls this age, and although one of our main focus things right now is to do service leadership programs in our, for our K kids in elementary and our builders club in middle schools and our key club at the high school, th this fills a special niche. And um, there are several of us girls in Kwanzaa that we just like to do this. <laughs> it's fun. It's it is. fun it's being fun. a girl. This is one of the it things is. that makes it all fun. Exactly. And to see the girls come out and look so beautiful and it's, it you know, kind of makes you remember when you were going to buy a prom dress. Okay, give us day, time, and place one more time. February 8th, Saturday, the second Saturday in February at First Federal Bank on Allentown Road across from Tom Hall from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right. And we're also having a big food sale at the same time, so uh, in case after you try on this size 2 dress you want to have a goodie to take <laughs> home, <laughs> you can pick one up. <laughs> And then um, if they want to drop off a dress in between now and then, it's at Duffy's, Duffy's Cleaners. Duffy's Cleaners, yes. And that's in the Shawnee Plaza. It is. And please try to have it there by February 1st because that gives them a week then to get them all cleaned and pressed and gives them some time. Okay. And if people want more information, how do they get they in touch with you? They can give me a call at 419-991-3152. All right. We appreciate you coming in today. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're welcome. Candy Newland with the Kiwanis Club. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. If you have the chance, will you help save the life of one of our nation's veterans, someone you know? I'm Deborah Norville. If you're the mother, sister, spouse, or friend of a veteran who seems angry, sad, or isolated, you may be seeing warning signs of depression or suicide. Some of these warning signs can be that the veteran seems disconnected from family or friends, starts to give away prized possessions, displays anger or rage, or overreacts to problems. The VA is reaching out to help, so please reach back. If your loved one is a veteran, and if you even think you see these warning signs, call 1-800-273-TALK and press 1. That's 1-800-273-TALK and press 1. Don't second guess yourself. Reach out for help. We're not doing well in Allen County. Almost 70% of our adults are overweight. And close to 40% of our children. We eat the wrong foods. We smoke too much. We don't exercise nearly enough. We can do better. We can do better. We can do better. Activate Allen County is working with schools, churches, businesses, and local government to influence policies that will help us all do better. We can do better for me, for me, for all of us. Join the effort to help Allen County do better by going to activateallencounty.com. Pay for with funding through a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Good morning, it's 8.07 from News Talk 1150 WIMA. On this Tuesday, January 28th, and we note, we mark, we remember what may turn out to be a record cold day. You almost have to believe it is for this particular date. In terms of all time, it's probably a top fiver of that kind of a thing. Tuesday morning, of course, we welcome in representatives of the city of Lyman. We appreciate Mayor Berger. Um, coming in today on this awful day, obviously the uh, uh, the old beast uh, started to today, right, Mayor? It cranked over. Actually, my uh, uh, both my personal car and my city car, the mm -hmm. the batteries died two weeks ago in uh -oh. both both vehicles. So I think uh -oh. I'm now prepared for the the weather extremis as this <laughs> this event is. But uh, you know, we're in good shape. I spoke with an automotive expert uh, yesterday. And, uh, and you sort of notice it now, this, this weather really brings out weaknesses, be it uh, car batteries, be it, uh, be it like backup lights, be right. it tail lights, things of that nature. Uh, you know, just as a suggestion to folks that uh, he made the point of need to, need to check all your various lights on your vehicle because the weather exacerbates weaknesses. Right? Well, it's, it's all systems that we take for granted. It yeah. could be the, uh, 
the auto, it could be our furnace, it could be the plumbing system, wherever wherever there's a, a weakness in mm-hmm. the uh, things that we rely on, this is this weather uh, really does stress all of it, and uh, and consequently, I'm sure we're keeping uh, the auto shops as well as uh, uh, plumbing and heating contractors very busy this time of year. You know, another thing that probably won't surprise you was out at uh, OSU Lima Roads, out last week one day, car caught on fire. You know why it caught on fire? No there, idea. There was no antifreeze in the car. It completely had sucked it dry. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, yeah, so little things that you just take for granted right. that, that you obviously uh, uh, need to uh, uh, not to take for granted. How about in terms of the city? Have you guys been sort of fortunate here in recent days with uh, with broken pipes and, and issues like that, or, or there's a rash of that, unfortunately? We had a rash um, uh, several weeks ago. I'm not aware that uh, uh, things in recent days have uh, been uh, breaking in terms of our water lines. I think mm-hmm. where we get that is when there's changing temperatures and, okay. and the um, – a uh, kind of uh, shifting in the ground begins to happen. Mm-hmm. That's what breaks those pipes. But uh, we have been uh, obviously very active with our snow plows. Uh, last night uh, went back to council to get authority to purchase more salt. Um, we're, uh, I think everybody in the region is uh, running short. Uh, we've essentially gone through what has been the annual uh, normal allocation of salt, and mm-hmm. we're now into... Um, uh, much beyond that. So um, it's the only way, however, uh, frankly, to keep any kind of uh, real um, uh, advantage on our streets is by uh, uh, using salt when the temperatures allow it to be applied where it it can have some kind of effect. But we're we're very active, and I, I think our folks have been doing a reasonably good job uh, both on the main arteries as well as in the residential areas. And, of course, the, I'm guessing 224-1150, by the way, is our local numbers of uh, uh, questions for the mayor. Again, 224-1150. I'm guessing there's a real uh, concerted effort also uh, by your team to uh, uh, to uh, conserve resources, that is, use them where needed, i.e. salt, plows, gasoline, things of that nature, but not just have them out for the sake of having them out. Well, we we know that we're uh, this season is uh, an unusual one, and uh, uh, so we are attempting to be uh, judicious in the way that we're um, responding. At the same time, I think that uh, uh, the public has um, uh, been cooperating with us. We appreciate the way in which uh, uh, people have been moving uh, their um, – uh, cars off the street in some instances. I have to say, we are. I think we're to a point, though, with some um, practices by contractors who are plowing um, uh, private lots, mm-hmm. uh, even with neighbors. Uh, folks are pushing their snow onto other people's properties. Oh, yeah. um, and um, the amount of snow uh, that's now gathering is making, making that a... Uh, um, unfortunate decision because mm-hmm. it's piling up in ways that I think uh, uh, are damaging uh, uh, the either blocking people's view as they're driving mm-hmm. uh, or in fact they're uh, making uh, pedestrian use of the sidewalks impossible so we're asking people not to do that we're asking people to begin to find alternatives um, and if we continue to get snow without some melt intervening We may begin to ask people to, uh, particularly for those that are maintaining commercial lots, that they begin to haul it or to use portions of their lots for storage rather Mm -hmm. than trying to push it off onto the edges. Uh, Excellent point. And, of course, uh, again, that that goes down to people just uh, sort of thinking maybe a little bit beyond their own situation. Well, it does, and recognizing that um, um, much like any property owner, you've if you've got water, um, you're not. The law does not permit you to to drain your property onto the next person's property. So here we've got solid water in the form of snow. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't assume that we can just push our snow onto other people's property either. All right, it's a very unusual weather situation we're uh, we're dealing with, and how unusual that even like the yo- local universities 
close for the day with no real snow at all, just simply because of the enormity or the depths, I should say, uh, of the cold. That's pretty rare, isn't it? Well, the, the temperatures really are at a point with the wind chill where it's dangerous to be out. And, um, you know, very brief exposures of, of skin, uh, you could end up, uh, uh, you know, ending up with some kind of frostbite. So I think that um, uh, for students who would be crossing campuses and uh, it could really be a dangerous situation, and I think the schools are making the wise choice. Yeah, I noticed no less than uh, than uh, UM Ann Arbor, Ohio State, Columbus, large campuses calling it for the day, and that's that's pretty rare, though. It's uh, quite astonishing. Well, but uh, they also, when you think about it, uh, they really do, the vast majority of those uh, students and faculty uh, walk uh, a fair amount to get from one point, one classroom to the next. So uh, I think um, uh, they don't want uh, to put their students in danger, and that's uh, the better better choice. You know, uh, with uh, Mayor Berger of the city of Lima, our in-studio guest, 224-1150 questions uh, you might have for the mayor this morning. Another dilemma, I've noticed uh, uh, folks walking in the streets around the city uh, simply because uh, maybe certain sidewalks aren't cleared, and, and, again, that's a huge cautionary thing, isn't it? Well, it, it presents uh, problems for the pedestrians. It presents problems for the drivers. Um, some, uh, there are slick areas where uh, it's potential for sliding. And, and um, uh, we do want to see people um, be responsible with their sidewalks. And I know that uh, code enforcement has been out. They've been issuing some citations for folks that haven't made any attempt uh, to remove their uh, snow, and um, and that's begun to cause a variety of uh, calls coming into uh, uh, the city to council members as people are angry about that. But I think that, you know, all of us knew winter was coming. Mm -hmm. All of us need to understand that uh, uh, we do have, with sidewalks, the need to take care of them. Um, I had a call uh, yesterday from someone who was very angry that uh, they were expected to uh, uh, remove their side or their snow Mm -hmm. because the property, uh, the principal owner of the property was in the hospital. Well, Mm -hmm. I understand that that's the personal circumstance. As a property owner, however, it's a um, responsibility that uh, folks need to be prepared to deal with. And um, I think... It's also the case, this is a great opportunity for folks to be good neighbors, so that uh, if you know that a, a, an elderly person or a uh, person that's ill isn't able to uh, take care of, of the sidewalk, it'd be a good thing if, as a, a good neighbor, that uh, yep. you either do it for them or you arrange for someone uh, to do so. I think there's always kids in a neighborhood who are looking for yep. a little bit of extra change to uh um, um, be engaged in that kind of thing. So, um, but it's it's probably best to plan ahead. I mean, this could be we could have two more months of snowfall. Yeah, Sunday so, Sunday would have been the perfect day to finish off that sidewalk prior to the huge drop off in town. That's so, right. Uh, right yeah. now, it's it's really you don't want to go out there today, right, right. obviously. But um, yeah. as the weather relents, um, it's really important that people get out and deal with this. All right, very good. 817 at News Talk 1150 WIMA. Still a few minutes with the mayor. Again, your questions or comments, 224-1150. Our phone lines are open, and we'll have more ahead on News Talk 1150 WIMA. It's 821 at News Talk 1150 WIMA. On this Tuesday morning with representatives of the city of Lima, Mayor Dave Berger is our in-studio guest. Coldest day of the year, maybe the coldest day in years. Uh, The point is... It's 13 below. Let's heat it up with a little phone conversation this morning. Carl from Lima is on with Mayor Berger. Carl, go ahead. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, I live on Ewing Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm 70 years old. I've had three heart attacks. I've died in an ambulance on the way to the hospital, and our fine firefighters saved my life. But I put, go out and shovel my sidewalk, and it's usually a day or a day and a half or during the night that the plows come through, and they come through so fast that they take all that heavy ice that's been driven on and throw it right up on our sidewalks. And I can't hardly lift that stuff off of there anymore. 
my 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 question is can't they just all they have to do is slow down a little bit and and it will it will roll up on a curb and it won't throw it up on our sidewalks so i think there's a little bit of responsibility there yet too well sir first of all given your health history i would really encourage you to not not do this personally i mean and i think there are lots of people in your circumstances where you need to rely on somebody else in terms of our uh, drivers i think um, while what you describe i think is true it's also the case that um, it's almost impossible to um, for them to do their job uh, at very very slow speeds and i think that as i've observed our drivers throughout the city um, they're not driving irresponsibly. I, I think that what you're describing is occurs with uh, a um, in in neighborhoods where there are certainly very narrow boulevard areas, the grassy areas, and I don't know that we can absolutely control and prevent that from happening. In order, as we go about doing the job of keeping the streets as clear as we can. And I know that our folks are also, depending upon where they are in the snow cycle, uh, the first time, second time through, they're basically doing the center of the streets. But as we try to clear it and move it back to the curb line itself in order to provide additional areas for parking and the like, um, that problem that you describe gets probably even more prevalent uh, throughout the community, simply because there's not enough space for um, the snow to go. And um, I understand the issue. I'm not sure that there's a good answer for it, however. All right, sir. But uh, the only thing is, uh, you can see where I've made the effort to clean my sidewalks. And I would hate to get a summons or, or, or a citation for not cleaning my sidewalks after they've thrown the snow back on. I understand that. And I, I think our folks have been judicious in the way they've been uh, going around, they really have been paying attention to folks that have done absolutely nothing, and uh, there are a few of those. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, Carl. Yeah, that's one of those unintended consequences things uh, where uh, where a good deed belies another, and what do you do? Right. Well, I, I think that uh, we manage through these things, and I think that just as we've got, um, um, I think the the need to pay attention um, overall, I think that the, all of us are working hard to try to, to deal with the, the public space that we have either in front of our home or mm-hmm. throughout the city with the 150 miles of streets that we have. So um, um, it does require us to be attentive, and I think all of us are working hard to try to manage all of those concerns as we go through the storms. Yeah, I would. I mean, I was outside till one o'clock in the morning one night here a month or so ago after that first big snow melted down, and we had near flooding in some of the streets. and And a couple of neighbors look out. What's what's the problem out there? And there's a lake out in the street. Obviously, sure. and I said, "Here's the problem." Oh, okay. And close their door, walk in the house, and that was the end of that. And you know, so. But you were trying to clear the storm drain. That's correct. Yeah, and I think that's again an example of what we need to do to help take care of ourselves as a community. It takes mm-hmm. both individuals. It also takes the city working hard to, with its responsibilities. All right. we And we can say our prayers and hope for warmer temperatures that's, that's at, true. at this point. Uh, and, and of course, well, last week we had uh, Rick Stolle in here talking about the park and, and the ponds and that sort of thing. Any sort of an effect with the reservoirs uh, with this, or they're just out there doing their thing? There's, there's really no, no kind of... Uh, Nothing really to track with those in this weather, is there? I think the um, the only thing with our reservoirs is we do have uh, uh, folks that are interested in ice fishing. Uh, this is the kind of weather in which, mm-hmm. um, you know, the ice may have become thick enough for folks to do it. Mm-hmm. Our concern, and we, we don't uh, prevent it, but we want people to be very aware that Ice fishing on the reservoirs can be dangerous because it's unpredictable when we are drawing water out. And mm-hmm. so there, the water uh, level may oh, be actually shift, be yeah. much below where the ice is, and that could uh, actually cause a, a problem. And we don't have an ability to predict it, and we can't right. give people notice. So people are, who are ice fishing are truly out there at their own risk. 
Ooh, that's a, that's probably a good point, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Still about two minutes. Uh, uh, still time for a final call if anybody wants to get in. Mayor, two minutes, not enough time really to delve into it. But, again, you were in Washington recently going to bat for Lima and a host of cities as a part of your involvement with the U.S. Conference on Mayors, right? I had the opportunity. Um, it was our winter meeting for the Conference of Mayors ahead of it. And after the meeting, we, uh, I and several uh, mayors made the rounds on the Hill talking about a proposed piece of legislation that um, the Conference of Mayors has developed, and Lima has been very much a part of the development of this, mm-hmm. for um, relief from the unfunded mandates related to our sewer systems. Uh, interesting parallel circumstance is that um, uh, Congressman Latta, uh, really in response principally to uh, the concerns being voiced by Defiance, uh, Ohio, um, introduced a a bill which um, its advocates say would provide uh, relief. Uh, We've looked at the bill, and frankly, um, our assessment of it is that um, it basically restates discretion um, and authority that the uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency already has. Mm -hmm. It basically says the agency shall or the agency may do such and such uh, our legislation says the agency shall do such and such mm-hmm. and there's a real difference in that because as long as the totality of the, the the authority rests with the agency and its policies and its framework uh, we will not get the relief we need at the local right. level we need to be in a position to look to the law to provide us with uh, the kinds of relief that um, truly will help communities at the local level. And so while I certainly applaud the interest that uh, Congressman Latta and others have taken, and they're beginning to actually take seriously the idea that they need to change the law, mm-hmm. uh, the change that they are now pursuing will not get to the point where it makes a real difference to our ratepayers uh, or to the communities that are having to uh, – engage in these really expensive uh, unfunded mandates. All right, and and that'll be uh, uh, certainly uh, important to follow uh, as the weeks and months uh, move forward, and we uh, we surely appreciate your efforts and, and Lada and others. Um, you're talking about all, ultimately a meeting of the minds uh, to cut to really the heart of the matter. Right? Well, I do think that there is opportunity for um, uh, more conversation and hopefully compromise <clears throat> the um, all of us want to do the right thing by way of the environment. Uh, all of us, however, are not about the idea of how of being practical, mm-hmm. of being focused on what is affordable. Uh, some only want to do what's right by the environment. Right. Uh, in my position, I need to be in a position to actually address the affordability for folks who have. I mean, our median household income in the city of Lima is twenty eight thousand dollars. Right was talking to a mayor at the meeting who was frustrated with my concerns and he said why don't you just go out and borrow 200 million dollars like we did right and i said jim what's your median household income and he said eighty eight thousand dollars a whole different deal i mean it's sixty thousand more than the median household income in lima and that difference is very real as to what we can afford versus that community and I think it's um, uh, unrealistic for those who are in those higher income brackets to look at our circumstances and say what we can afford. We can state what we can afford, but I don't believe those folks who are uh, – and this goes to the the personal circumstances, frankly, of the regulators. Mm-hmm. Most of them are in situations where they can't appreciate the difficulty right. of somebody trying to make a budget on $28,000 a year or less. Right. They're six-figure administrators. Well, yeah, probably. Yes. Very good. Mayor, thank you for your time. As always, stay warm. Have a good day. Thank you, Mike.